Hi everyone, this is Stephen Dempsey and I want to show you how to quickly create a glowy kind of dreamy black and white look for a portrait. For this tutorial I'm using On One Photo Raw 2018 Beta 4. I'm not going to be talking about retouching mainly because of time and this model had pretty much flawless skin anyway. So when I'm working in black and white, uh, I usually start out by reducing contrast and boosting the shadows in develop. This gives me a lot more options later. Um, the flatter the file, the more I can use contrast, uh, boost lights and uh, darks when I get to effects. So we're just going to um, gently reduce the contrast. Um, this here down to at 18 there and boost the shadows a little bit just just a little to about 12 or 13 that's good all right we will we'll head over to effects uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a um, black and white filter and there's a lot of trial and error using the color sliders uh, each image will be different so I usually just play with each slider until I'm happy with the base look um, I generally look at what's going on. Um, I know that she had uh, kind of reddish pink lips, so I'm going to bring down the red a little bit, and when I reduce that, it'll enhance any reds in the photograph, so it'll bring the lips out a bit. So I'm just going to go down to uh, about there. And then yellow uh, brings brightness to the skin, and I'm going to go up to uh, about there on that one. Um, I know there's no green in aqua in this particular picture, um, but there's a little bit of blue in the background, and I just want to darken that slightly so I can separate the foreground. And magenta, um, there's a teeny bit of magenta in her hair, so I'm going to bring that up a little bit, just like that. So next I want to add a dynamic contrast filter, and obviously that's way too much, um, so I will use a little uh, preset that I have already, which is just none. It flattens everything out. And um, I'm going to bring the medium um, details down. And this does a much more effective job than reducing sharpness or clarity. Um, it keeps all the detail there um, and the contrast, uh, but it just softens uh, blemishes and things like that. And um, I want to give a shout out to Jim Wilninski on that one. Um, I saw that in one of his tutorials and it's really proven to be pretty effective. So um, next I'm going to add a glow filter. And I want to start getting into just that kind of soft focus look. Um, and, uh, you know, it kind of is reminiscent of some of the golden era Hollywood glamour shots. Um, I just like that kind of dreamy look. And it, again, takes all that hard edge off. So for this, I'm going to do the amount up to about 60. And I'll do a halo um, right around there. And we'll reduce the overall effect. Um, to about right there. And that's the before and that's the after. You can see that the contrast is boosted a little bit and there's that softness there. So um, at this point I feel like I may be losing a little bit of detail in the face so I want to um, bring in another tone enhancer to try to recover some of that. And um, I'm just going to bring the, con the exposure down a little bit, right about there, and uh, the contrast I want to bring down again because it's it's a little bit too contrasty still for me. Um, so we'll bring that down to about there. And the highlights, um, we will bring those down also just to recover any of the details that are lost there, uh, down to about there. And then um, the shadows, uh, we'll just bring that up a little bit, just kind of to give it that softness again. And that looks good about there. So next I'm going to add a blur um, filter. And this is just kind of adding to that soft uh, effect again. Now this time I'm actually going to be using a blending mode. Um, so what I'll do is I'll set up um, 
what I'm doing first, which is uh, I want to bring the opacity down to about 30 on this. About there. And then go to the blending modes. And I am going to choose um, overlay. You can also use soft light. Um, I just like overlay for this particular effect. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a mask here um, to try to bring back some of the detail on the eyes, the lips, and some of the hair strands. Um, I didn't do it in the glow because I, if I do it too much, um, then the, the details will start popping out too much over the effects I'm putting on there, so it'll start having a, a kind of a strange look to it. So we're just going to selectively do the blur at the moment. So I am going to... Um, Grab a, I have a brush here, so I'll bring it, make it a little bit bigger. And I am painting out, and I'm going to paint out at about 50%. So just a quick rub here on this one here. Same here, and then just a little dab on the lips. And then just running it through the strands so that I can bring out some more detail here. So that looks good. Now the eyes are looking a little bit dark to me, so we are going to fix that with another tone enhancer. And I'm going to mask everything out except the eyes, but we'll just set up um, the actual uh, settings first. All right, so we'll bring the exposure up a little bit. Contrast is going to come down. Um, we'll do shadows up. And for this, I'm going to bring the detail up just a slight bit, just so we can get some detail in the eyes there. All right, so now I'm going to invert this because I'm only putting it in the eyes. And I'm actually going to bring the brush really small, and um, we're going to be painting in. And I'm just going to go around the eyes here, like this. Like that. Let's take a look at that. So, just before, after, I put a little bit more in here. Like that. Okay. So that is before. That's after. I'd probably take it down actually a little bit. It just looks like a little bit too much now. All right. I should also note at this point that um, the stacking order of your filters is very important. I'm going to add a subtle texture now in a few minutes, and I've deliberately waited until um, I'm a little bit, you know, higher in the stack um, because I don't want the the um, texture to be uh, influenced by the glow and the um, blur. They would change the the whole uh, look of the texture. So. I'm keeping that on top so it's not affected by that. So I'm going to go to, and, and generally speaking, I would not be using textures all that much in these kinds of photographs um, with, you know, smooth skin and like a portraiture in general. Um, but this texture is pretty subtle and I'm using it because it's going to give the portrait a, a kind of an organic look, um, more of a an analog film grain kind of feel. So let's go to the textures. And I'm going to use a photomorphosis, or excuse me, photomorphous um, texture that I just got. And it is, where is it? Right here. Fogbound textures. And the one I like is 12. So I'm going to 12. And that has kind of, it's given a little bit of color, but it's also washed it out a bit. So I'm going to bring the brightness down by about that much. And I, I don't really need to do anything more because it's, it's brought in a little bit of texture on each side and it's almost imperceptible in the skin. So I think it's fine. Uh, for some final toning, um, I'll use another black and white um, filter. And I'm not going to do anything with the color sliders this time. I'm just going to go directly to the toner. And I'm going to pick out my favorite toner here, which is the Antique Yellow. And uh, I'm going to leave it exactly as is, except I'm going to take this effect way down in the opacity. And probably somewhere around, even that's too much. 
maybe around 12. So there's the before and there's the after. So um, that's pretty much it as far as the uh, picture is concerned. I mean, I, I can do a lot more work on it, but this is just giving you a basic idea. Um, one of the things I'm not sure if anyone noticed is that when I uh, open one uh, effects panel, the other one closes. And that is a new feature in um, uh, version 2018. It's up here at the window, and it's called Solo Mode. And um, it just stops all the um, the, t the uh, filters, uh, panels from being open at once, which means a lot of scrolling. So uh, I really prefer that method. So anyway, that's just a, a little tip there for you guys. Um, so I hope this tutorial was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.